Essential presentation skills? Eleven. How many did we speak about? Nine. 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 Two left. We'll come back to the two. We moved on from there. We spoke about the second element, which is developing your presentation. Developing your presentation. Where? What did you speak about there? The Christmas tree technique. Now we move on to the third element. Which is the third element? Audience. The audience. And there's five.
So you saw, you know, just before, it was going to hit the iceberg, right, a little while before that. You don't have to tell me the scene, etc. Just the gist of it. What did the captain make of the iceberg in that movie? Sorry, come again. What, what is it? What, what, so the, the captain, okay. when he saw the iceberg in the distance, he knew this way, the ship was going to hit the iceberg. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he also calculated the damage in his head as to what that damage will be caused by that iceberg. So, what was the damage that the cap captain was calculating to, to sort of even help you further with another hint? Did the captain only account for what he saw of the iceberg? Or did the captain also account for the fact that there is, given that this is an iceberg and this is the tip of the iceberg, there is two thirds or nine tenths below, somewhere below water and it is actually going to cause much greater damage. So what did the cal captain calculate? The calculation was uh, to a certain extent, only to a certain extent uh, the damage is going to happen and the rest of the disaster was not, what was, uh, was not planned. Was not accounted for. Is that correct? Is that yes. correct? Yes, you have a different point of view. You saw some different Titanic. Go for it. No, he thought the Titanic was too big. To, obviously, yeah. yes. yes. And the iceberg was too small too to have any impact. Too high any impact, yeah. absolutely. So that's where the damage is going to be a, yeah. a smaller one. A smaller one, yes. The yes. second part, what I understood to be here, if he goes in the strain, uh, without any elevation, uh, the entire ship might uh, break down, or if he takes at least elevation, only portion of the ship might the lower levels so the, will be submerged, yeah. but the yeah. ship will manage so to go ship through. Should manage to go. So, what was the central policy there? The central policy was the adaptation estimating of the, the strength of the iceberg. Yeah. That was the central policy. Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Thank you very much, Captain. I'll see you in a minute. We'll come back to you. Now, iceberg knowledge is much like that iceberg in Titanic. What you are able to see is only the what you can call it as periphery, the superficial, the surface level, call it what you will. But basis on what is on the periphery, on the surface, at the superficial level, people who are your audience are constantly making evaluations of what you are about. Yes or no? Right now, in this room, the 10, 12 of us, depending upon how we are sitting, how we are standing, what questions are we asking, how are we answering those questions, are we making enormous number of evaluations about each other? Yes. A. B. Is this process voluntary or is this process to a very large extent today involuntary? Involuntary. involuntary. It just happens. And the basis of how we answer a lot of questions are we also, again subliminally, evaluating the depth of the people, the breadth of the people's knowledge, etc, etc, etc? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Please understand, I'm not getting into the right and wrong of it. I'm not saying it is right to do it. I'm not saying it is wrong to do it. I'm just saying it is there and we can see it happen. Iceberg knowledge is exactly that. It means that iceberg knowledge is the curiosity to understand everything around you. Not from a post-mortem point of view. What's a post-mortem point of view? Post. After the death. After the death. Yes, absolutely. But, from the spirit of understanding and gaining a wide-angle view of the universe, right? So, for example, I'm trying to eat this mental chocolate, and as 
small the fonts are at the back of this document, I'm still trying to understand what is gone inside this. Right? Uh, I'm sitting in a flight. There are two, three, four magazines lying there. I have a couple of hours. <coughs> I'm picking and I'm reading and I'm understanding and I'm making notes and I go back on and on and etc 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 etc. Why is iceberg knowledge or how is iceberg knowledge relevant to communication and presentation? It's very much essential because then since the consciousness of the point has a uh, what called a, a way of recording everything. Now it remembers certain things which is important to it and doesn't remember. They all lie, but it doesn't remember. So that's where the eye knowledge comes. And why it doesn't show communication? What to remember and what to speak. Right. Okay. On, on, on track, yes. How is iceberg knowledge relevant to presentation? I need to understand what is iceberg knowledge. Right. Iceberg knowledge is essentially trying to understand subjects, topics that may not be directly relevant to whatever it is that you are speaking but purely out of your what is curiosity? inquisitiveness what at a level of principle is known as hunger of knowledge the unknown of the soul, the hunger of the soul, there is the hunger of the body, right? There is the hunger of the mind, curiosity, and I can again give you specifics that will not give you a full understanding, but to understand curiosity, it is the hunger of the soul. That is a generic. What my question is, is how is this relevant to communicating better? How is this relevant to presenting better? have this iceberg knowledge uh, that gives you that uh, you know the confidence to digress and again come back to it. Super! How does me understanding how this bottle of mineral water may help me in my presentation tomorrow? What kind of a stupid assumption is that? How does this help me make a better presentation tomorrow? If it is on water bottle then yes definitely yes. If it is not a water bottle then no. definitely no. No, you can change the topic. Change the topic and then again come back to it. No, you will have something so, to talk about you, apart from the apart from the business. Look at this. You, know you will that. have something to speak about other than what the subject is. And in that little discussion that we just we just had, you know, when, when, when I asked you what's the importance of knowledge and you said how the mind works, the mind is fantastic at making associations. And forming metaphors. When you form a metaphor, you basically enhance your understanding of something and help articulate it in a way where it enhances the understanding of some, somebody else or whatever the subject that you are talking about. So, for example, if somebody doesn't know what a refrigerator is, the metaphor I can use is that it is like the air conditioner, but not for the human body, but for a Look at that. Does otherwise try helping somebody understand what a refrigerator is? In general. So, iceberg knowledge is taking a conscious effort to build your knowledge reserves about what? On what? Anything and everything. Around us. Yes. It can be movies, it can be sit down, it can be theater, it can be. Nuclear physics, it can be rocket science, it can be philosophy, it can be psychology. Because at one level everything is connected. Yes or no? We might not be able to see the connections at all times, but at one level everything is connected. And when you understand a lot about a lot of things, will your mind make those connections when relevant? Example for you spoke today morning to him about the Sweden. About Sweden, yeah. Yes. Right? Now, a couple of other points about why 
high iceberg knowledge and then I'll give you resources to build your iceberg knowledge. As a presenter, as a communicator, as a leader, as a manager, what is the benefit of iceberg knowledge? When you're communicating with your team.
20 minutes or less talks by some of the best. The real, genuine, authentic subject matter experts on all and any topics under the sun. I'm not talking about TEDx, all the all the things that are happening in colleges. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about TEDx and TED related events. I'm talking about the real TED, TED which is TED.com. Right? <coughs> 20 minutes or less and years of understanding of a subject is compressed. Imagine if you understand the computer language, the file size is compressed. From 1 GB to maybe 20 KMB or, or something like that. But no loss of fidelity. The resolution is still the same. Right? You know, often people say he or she was an overnight success. And then that person says, yes, I was an overnight success, but I prepared 20 years for the overnight success. Being on TED is like that. Those 20 minutes that they speak, they have been preparing for that time. Or maybe some, in some of the cases, the lifetime. I mean, you get a Nobel Prize sometimes when you work for 30 years on something. The person who got the the the, uh, the, the Nobel Prize uh, for uh, the internal GPS of the brain, yeah, medicine. they have been working, I husband and wife have been working for 35 years on it. Not, not vegan. Not vegan. Right? So, anyway, without that isn't too much, the surest way of building iceberg knowledge is one place to stay. What else? All of you have telephones the size of televisions. Right? Can we have flipboard there? How many people know what is flipboard? You know what is flipboard? Do you have flipboard? I have. Do you have flipboard? So do you use flipboard? Right? It's knowing the right thing and then doing the real thing. That's the gap. So building iceberg knowledge is a solid best practice. The good news is today it does not take so much time or so much money or so much energy or so much bandwidth. You spend 40 to 60 minutes one week, which means 20 Three minutes or 40 minutes on a day with the 20 minutes on the That's it. And you don't have to necessarily understand mythology. You can define four, five, six subjects that you're actually passionate about for whatever reason your parents did not allow you to pursue it. I don't know, man, what? But there's still time now. Go and read it. And do something of it. There's no excuse. Right? Can be anything, can be classical music. You will, you will rediscover yourself. <coughs> you will find that, why did I not think of it first? Because your brain will start making those associations. Right? That is how you bring a satirist paribus in a presentation. Uh, imagine if I don't know Satyrus Paribus, how long will it take for me to help you understand what I mean by Satyrus Paribus? Crazy, isn't it? So that's one. The second of these five is actually coming back to me. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the flipboard is an app. It's an app. Uh, do you have, for, do you have iOS, do you have Blackberry, do you have Google Body? You have Android. You have Android. So you just go to the Play Store, type Flipboard, download Flipboard. It is free. Once you download Flipboard, it will ask you what are your areas of interest. So you select one, two, three, four, five, six areas. The moment you select those five, six areas, breaking news on any of those subjects from all around the world continuously comes into your RSS feed. So it saves all the time. So you, sometimes you're interested on science, but to understand what is happening in science, you have to go to the internet, go to the newspaper. Nothing. It all comes directly to you. We can change the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do all that. All this knowledge costs extra money, huh, by the way. <laughs> no, no, not extra money there, extra money here. Yeah. Extra money will give lunch. Okay, the second 
to 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 help you understand the magic of this the second best practice is actually come because the first best practice was there the 